Alrighty, welcome to my first ever YouTube Let's Play, the original Mega Man. Alright, so we got ourselves Cut Man, Guts Man, Ice Man, Bomb Man, Fire Man, and Elect Man. Who are we going after first? Answer is pretty clear. We're going to go after the super easy to take out Cut Man. And here he comes now, Cut Man, clear points that don't really matter for anything, but we're putting the original Mega Man because, you know, it was the arcade times still, so points people thought still kind of mattered, but they really didn't. Although, you know, nowadays it's kind of come back with the leaderboards and everything. Anyway, let me tell you all a little bit about Cut Man. Also known as DLN-003 or DRN-003 if you live in Japan, or I guess technically DLWN-003, because, I mean, technically Doctors Light and Wily kind of teamed up to make these robot masters, but whatever. He is a robot who was originally created for tree trimming work. The cutter on his head is extremely sharp. A good point about him, he is sharp and cunning. A bad point, he is stubborn. He likes haircuts because the, the scissors, yeah, that's good, good work, Capcom. And he dislikes rocks, which is funny because Mega Man's Japanese name is actually Rockman. Also pointing out the uh, deadly yet intricate yet simple game of rock, paper, scissors that Mega Man is all about. So, Mega Man. Why did I choose Mega Man as my first ever Let's Play? I like Mega Man. Um, as you're seeing, I'm actually pretty damn good at playing Mega Man games, so, you know, that's kind of why. Although, to be fair, I didn't get into Mega Man until pretty recently. I mean, I was into Sonic the Hedgehog for a long time and Mario for a long time. Mega Man was something that only came up in my radar a few years ago, but I got into it really quick. It was... It's fun, it was action-packed, you know, you got your jumping and your shooting and the obligatory jump and shoot man reference there. But I, what what the hell happened to that? Did you all see that? That was that was nuts. Alright, well, whatever. Anyway, I got into Mega Man, it's fun. That that's pretty much all there is to it. Then I got into Mega Man X and Mega Man Zero and ZX and Legends and all that good stuff. But yeah, we're playing original Mega Man, so we'll get to those. When we eventually get to those. Anyway, coming up to the end of Cutman stage, getting past all these spikes. Oh, the big eyes. Oh, I did a pretty good job dodging there. They do a third of damage. They take away a third of your health upon contact, so, you know, don't get hit by them, because that would suck for you, especially if you have less than a third of your health. Another thing about Mega Man. Only game that has boss hallways with stuff in them. I'll talk more about that later. Let's get into Cutman himself. Here he comes now. One of the easiest robots in the entire franchise. He takes massive damage from just your Mega Buster. So, you know, it's one of his weaknesses. That's how good it is against him. Uh, he's going to be throwing his rolling cutter at you. He's going to be jumping around. Actually, a little bit tough if you're a newbie Mega Man player. Because he moves around a lot. And you may not be used to that. So you may end up getting killed. But... Your Mega Buster does a lot of damage, so you're going to end up killing him pretty quickly anyway, so, you know, not all that difficult. And there we get our clear points, you know, because those matter so much in the day. Alright, next robot, who are we going after? Ooh, Gutsman. We're going to be seeing a lot more of this guy in the franchise. I don't, I don't know why, but Dr. Wily has some kind of obsession with him. Anyway... Let me tell you a little bit about Gutsman, also known as DLN-004. Gutsman is a civil engineer robot. He is so powerful that he can lift and carry a rock of up to two tons. A good point. He is sentimental. A bad point. He is a one-track mind. He likes karaoke, and he dislikes arguments. Oh, well, that's a good Gutsman. Good for him. Sounds like a nice guy. Oh, these helicopter things, I hate them so much. <sighs> and we just got past them. Pretty tough part. I'm, I'm going to get back to talking about that um, moving platform bit in the beginning later, because we're actually going to revisit that later. Spoiler alert. It's Pike Man. Not that difficult, I'm, I say, as I get hit. Oh, I missed the life. Oh, just barely. <sighs> anyway, something about Gutsman stage. It's very short. 
and besides that bit in the beginning that we already got through, um, it's not that difficult. I mean, you're gonna see I'm already done with the stage. We're already at the big eye, which is at the end of... I think he's at the end of every stage. Or if not every stage, most stages. He's at... he's not... no, you know what? He's not at the end of Fireman stage, so he's not at the end of every stage, but we're already at the end of the stage. It's not... not that long. Anyway, the thing about the boss hallways. The original Mega Man is the only game that actually has enemies that can attack and hurt you in the boss hallways. Every other game doesn't have that. So, you know, that's good for the original Mega Man, I guess. Alright. Guts Man. Wow, we're already here. He's gonna be jumping up and down. He's gonna be causing massive shock waves that can, you know, stop you from moving. So, you have to time your jumps the very second he's about to land back on the ground so that you don't get affected by the, you know, shock waves that happen. Um... Yeah, see, I, you have to be very, very careful with the timing, or else you're just gonna, you're gonna get hit, like I am there. Uh, occasionally, when he jumps up and down, he's gonna summon these uh, rocks from the ceiling to throw at you. They do a lot of damage. Try your best to dodge them. And yeah, there's not much more to say. And boom, he's dead. All right, good. Good. That wasn't bad. All right. We got our power. Speaking of that, I didn't talk about the rolling cutter. We're gonna get to the rolling cutter in more detail a little bit later when it actually becomes relevant. For now though, I'm gonna talk about the super arm, which is the weapon you get from Gutsman, since you're not gonna have many opportunities to see it in the main game itself. Basically, it's represented by the G, because Gutsman, and you can pick up and throw some rocks around. Preferably things that don't uh, really fit into the environment, or probably things that you can throw. It also happens to be Cutman's weakness. So if you were having a tough time with Cutman, then you can just use the super arm, as you'll see here, to take him out with those two out of place blocks in two hits. And there goes half his health. Dodge that. Pick that up, and boom, he's dead. That's it can be that easy if you go after Gutsman first and decide to go after Cutman later. In case you're having too much trouble, or if you just, you know, I don't know, whatever. You just want to use weaknesses. Okay, who are we going after next? It's gonna be Bomb Man. Does he have a mohawk? Oh, I don't notice that. Anyway, let me tell you all a little bit about Bomb Man, also known as DLN006. Bomb Man is a robot created to destroy base rock. His Hyper Bomb, which is the weapon we're gonna get from him, is so powerful that it can break any kind of rock. A good point. He has a daring attitude. A bad point. He's a high spender. Where would he get money from? He's a, whatever. He likes bowling, and he dislikes matches and lighters, because they would prematurely detonate his bombs. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. Alright. Bomb Man's stage. A little tricky, but nothing you're not used to. Bunch of introduced to a brand new enemy right here, the Sniper Joes! Oh, a staple of Mega Man. You can't shoot through their shields, you gotta wait until they start shooting at you, or when they're jumping up and down, which is a little weird, because you, you still see the shield in front of them, but you can hurt them when they're jumping up and down, so that's, that's a little strange. Alright, come on. There you go, there it is. Oh, no. Those little balls that I'm collecting, by the way, are points. You get points based on, I think, multiplies by 100 or... Yeah, 100 for every one you get at the end of the stage, but uh, again, points don't matter, so even if I'm wrong, who, who cares, because they're, they're points, they, they don't mean anything. <sighs> oh, these things. These things cannot be taken out by anything but the rolling cutter, as you'll see demonstrated right now. Now let me talk about the rolling cutter, since we just saw it. Rolling cutter is basically a boomerang weapon. You throw it, and it... It's a pair of scissors and it comes back to you like like a boomerang. So, you know. Good. That's great. Oh, this little bit this little bit can be tricky. Very easy to fall on the spikes in this section of the level. If, oh, there we go. Oh, got hit, but it doesn't matter. No threat of the spikes. Sniper Joe again. You don't have to fight this one, but uh, I want the life, so, you know. He's going down. 
I don't want to take any damage, so, you know, I'm just playing chicken with them. Having them jump up and down. Come on. Come on. But there you go. Ah. Come on. Do it again. Come on. Go for it. Go for it. Come on. You want to see? Ah, there you go. Ah. Come on. So close. Oh, he's down. All right. And we got our life. All right. Yeah, that worked out. Took a little longer than I wanted it to, but it worked out. So, all right. We're good there. Yep. Come snipe Sniper Joe. Protecting the boss door. Come on, buddy. I'm going down even faster than your brother over there. Come on. There you go. Okay. Now we're at the boss. So let's talk a little bit about what Bomb Man is all about right after we get through this. Oh, I got hit there. I should have. Whatever. <sighs> bomb Man. As we heard from his bio, he loves his hyper bombs. He's going to be throwing them at you. Try to get up close to him, because he will always be jumping away from you, so you can force him not to throw as many bombs if you're just getting all up in his face the entire time. He can still be throwing bombs, and they can still do some quite a bit of damage, but a lot less than normal, and, you know, just keep opening fire, and, you know, that'll be that. It's not that difficult. He's a pretty good candidate for a first robot master, if you're having trouble with Gutsman or Cutman or anybody else, then he's a pretty good candidate to go up to first, if you want. Oh, it's by a thousand. Well, wait, right, that's not a hundred for the pink balls that you collect. All right. Anyway, the hyper bomb also happens to be Gutsman's weaknesses. Weakness, not weaknesses. Weakness. Hyper bomb is a pretty. I'm gonna be honest. It's a pretty, it's a pretty lame weapon. I don't. I don't have fun much use for it. I don't. I rarely use it against Gutsman. First of all, though, the throwable rocks, red herring. They don't do anything against against Gutsman at all. They do like one bit of health each. The hyperbomb is his weakness. It only takes three hyperbombs to actually kill him, but they're bombs, so once you throw them, you know, they'll take a few seconds before they blow up. And in those few seconds, Gutsman could potentially jump away, as he just did, extending this fight even more, which, which stinks. Oh, there we go, though. But it makes up for it for the fact that only three of them kill Gutsman, so, you know, do with that what you will. Personally, I'd, I'd, I wouldn't use the weakness against Gutsman. It's, uh... It's not that great a weapon, if you want my honest opinion. But, you know, there it is, just in case. It's an option for you. Alright. <clears throat> Next up, we are going to go after Elecman. Let me tell you all a little bit about Elecman. Let me bring up his bio really quick. Alright, Elecman, also known as DLN008. Elecman is a robot originally created to control the power voltage in an electric power plant. A good point, he's responsible. A bad point, he's twisted. Oh, oh, that's. Alright. He likes guitar, and he dislikes rubber products, because of the electricity. Yeah, that's. Good work again, Capcom. Yeah, you're real. Good, good work. Good, good work. All right, and like man stage. It's all about climbing this electrical tower. It's good, good stuff. There we go. All right. Ah, uh, introduced to the reappearing, disappearing platform blocks. Good. That's you know, especially in the early Mega Man games, it's so easy to um glitch into them and be pushed off to the side or something like I was that first time you saw there. Overall though they're not used all that much in the original Mega Man game so you don't have to worry too much there. They're gonna appear here again to get us moving into the next part of the stage but overall they're not, they're not that bad. In this game anyway. In some of the games they get really really nuts with them. Ooh, branching pathways. Oh, shit, I'm right. Oh, my God, hit by that. By that whatever it is, if I'd gone to the right. Oh, well. It's not a perfect no-hit run. It's just a run. Hopefully an informative run. Hopefully I'll be informative. That's, that's my goal with this Let's Play. Be super informative about everything Mega Man. And I know I'm not going to catch every single detail about Mega Man in one playthrough. So, you know... For all five of you listening for this, to this first video, I hope at least five of you are listening, 
then, uh, you know, feel free to point out if I missed something or I got something wrong, you know. Always helps. This thing. You're gonna want to get this thing. Go after Gutsman first, and then come to a like man stage and get that thing. That is the magnet beam. You need that so badly. And you can even use it in Gutsman stage to get past this uh, really difficult platforming bit in the beginning that uh, I said we're gonna come back to. And we came back to it, so, you know. I'm a man of my word. Very easy to get through. It's makeshift platforms that last for a little bit and then disappear. It's extremely, 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 I'm gonna say extremely one more time, extremely vital that you get that because you will not be able to beat the game unless you have the magnet beam. So do yourself a favor, you go after Gutsman first, then you come to a Lechman stage, and you get the magnet beam. Actually, let me rephrase that. You go after Gutsman first, then Cutman, then a Lechman. Because a Lechman, as you'll see in a bit, he's not easy. He's, he's not an easy robot to take out. Not, not at all. Oof, you, you're gonna want his, oh, I got hit there. You're gonna want his weakness. So, Guts Man, Cut Man, get the Magnet Beam, and then fight Like Man, who, spoiler alert, his weakness is the Rolling Cutter. Oh, this is a copy of that last screen. Alright. Yeah, that's okay, I guess. I mean, we're almost done with the level, so. Whatever. And. Here comes the big guy. He's back. But, we can use the Magnet Beam and just pass him. Haha, -ha, yes. Nothing beats the Blue Bomber. Alright. <sighs> Let me tell you all why Lechman is so difficult to beat with just the basic weapon. I've been taking on the first three guys with just the basic weapon, and then showing you optionally other ways to take him out. I'll, I'll show you Bomb Man's later one. That, that, power actually becomes relevant, but, um, Elekman, <laughs> oh, you don't want to take him on with just the Mega Buster. Elekman's Thunder Beam is so powerful that it can take you out in three hits, as you'll see here. I don't have full health, so it's actually going to take two hits, but still, it's really, really powerful, and don't be fooled by those Guts Blocks. It doesn't do any well, it does a little bit, but not enough to justify using them at all. Oh, he's... Do you see how much damage that one Thunder Beam did? That this next one is gonna kill me? When the yeah, no, no, oh, there it is, there it is. The electric shuffle emitter, there it is. His weakness is the rolling cutter. You're gonna want to use it. Rolling cutter takes him out in three hits. Thunder Beam takes you out in three hits. One way or another, this is gonna be a really, really short fight. Thank God, that hit there. Oh, thank goodness. Anyway, for our efforts in taking out what is easily one of the most powerful robot masters in this game, we get the most powerful weapon in this game, the Thunder Beam. Alrighty, which we're actually going to see in action in the next robot we take on, which is... Come on, don't leave us in suspense. It is... Iceman! Alright, so let me get to his bio right away. <clears throat> mm, excuse me. Iceman, also known as DLN005. Iceman is a robot created for work in a cold district, as, as you'd expect, because he's named Iceman. His Ice Slasher can freeze any object. A good point. He's a show-off. That's... that's not a good point. Right, whatever. Bad point. He is self-centered. He likes snowball fights, because cause the snow... Huh, yeah. And he dislikes sauna baths because because ice uh, melts. Uh, <laughs> good one, Capcom. Again, ooh, those penguin enemies. They are they are annoying. There is one section in Iceman stage that pretty much guarantees you should go after Electman first. First of all, there's the Thunder Beam. Very powerful weapon. Shoots in uh, directly up, directly down, and right in front of you. It's a very powerful weapon. And I'm showing off the hyper bomb again. It's... Blech. I don't know you're using all that much. Anyway. There is one section in Iceman stage that pretty much guarantees that you should go after a like man first. You really, really should go after a like man first and get the magnet beam. 
which means you go after Guts Man, and then Cup Man, then a Lake Man, then Ice Man, because you need the Magna Bean for something that's coming up. Not this bit. I, I mean, you're gonna see right here how to actually get through this reappear and disappear block puzzle. So, you go there, and you jump there, and jump up, and you're done. So, you know, that, that one isn't that bad. This next section. Oh my goodness. This next section is terrible. Those platforms, you're gonna be seeing those in a bit because I'm gonna show off what happens when you go through this normally. Use the Mac and Beam. Just do yourself a favor. Use, use the Mac and Beam. Just get through this really, really quick and painless. Well, not painless, I got hit there. But really, really quick. And now oh, I got hit by the penguin thing. And there you go. Seems harmless with the Mac and Beam. When you try to go through it normally, you realize what's wrong with this section, and that is that these platforms have no pattern. These uh, these turret things with the eyeballs, they're also platforms. Um, they have no pattern at all. So, you know, those getting through those first few is a little easy, but then uh, he, he turns away, so well, what can I do? And we're coming back, and he turns away again. Uh, that, that, that sucks. And they're constantly shooting at you, so if you do something stupid like jump there, and you're dead, and you have to start from the beginning of that, and it's it's uh, it's it's just it's just terrible. I just use the knife to me. It's life there because they know that section is really really difficult. They know it. Oh. So yeah. Again, I don't want to reiterate, but do yourself a favor, get the Magnet Beam from a Lek Man stage before you come to Ice Man stage. It's going to make your life very easy. I'm going to once again sheep this big eye out because... Haha, -ha, take that big eye. And we made it to the boss, which I've already spoiled is weak to the Thunder Beam. I'm going to start talking about it right now because why not? You can take this boss on with just the Mega Buster, as you'll see here. I don't actually beat him, but, you know, you'll see that it's possible to take him on. It's not that difficult. Basically, he's going to jump. He's going to use his Ice Slasher. You jump there like that. I mean, I don't do it that well, but you jump there, and it requires... That, that's the problem with, with this boss. It requires very careful timing with how you jump. Like that. There we go. That's 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 how you do it. That's how you jump it. It requires very careful timing. That's that's my point. And that's what makes it so difficult. What makes it even more difficult is the fact that Ice Slasher, like the Thunder Beam, can kill you in three hits. So it's not a short fight though. It, it you can you can make it last and you can beat him. You have to just be good at jumping, but you know. If you mess up even three times or once, if you have little health, then it's over. So just do yourself a favor. Use the Thunder Beam. It's why not? It's fine. Thunder Beam takes him out in three hits. Ice Slasher takes you out in three hits. So be sure to dodge that Ice Slasher because that that Ice Slasher there could still hit you, despite the fact that Ice Man was already dead. So anyway, we beat him, and we got the Ice Slasher. So. Good times. Good, good times. Got our points, our super, super useful points that are going to go up in my leaderboards. Oh, yes. Revisiting this section. I said earlier this section was tricky. You can get through it very easily with the Ice Slasher. reason you would want to use the Ice Slasher in that section is because of the spikes. If those guys hit you and you fall on the spikes, then you're dead. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, wait a minute, don't don't spikes just kill you when you jump into them? You know, instant instant death, you know? But don't you get the invincibility frames when you get hit? And, oh, no, they, they still kill you. Okay. That's the thing about the original Mega Man. Even if you have invincibility frames, you're still going to die if you hit spikes in one hit, so, you know, be careful of that. And you may want to have Ice Slasher when you go to Bomb Man stage. Anyway. Fireman, the last robot master. Let's talk about Fireman, also known as DLN-007. Fireman is a robot created for work in an incinerator. His main weapon is called Firestorm. Oh, wow, that's... Oh, you know, I remember in Seinfeld there was a movie called Firestorm. <laughs> that part where he jumps out the helicopter and shoots the... Oh, I love Seinfeld. Anyway, a good point. He's hot-blooded. A bad point. Hot-tempered. He likes summer camp, because summer, it's hot, huh? and he dislikes rainy days, because of the water. <laughs> oh, nice man. Anyway, one of the main gimmicks of Fireman's stage, I said Iceman, didn't I? Oh, well, whatever. One of the main gimmicks of Fireman's stage is 
the fire pillars, as you're seeing here. They don't do that much damage, actually, so, you know, if you get hit by them, as you'll see me get hit quite a bit by them, you don't have to worry too much, because they they don't do that much damage. What you should be worrying about is those uh, fire balls, spurts, I don't know what they're officially called, that shoot up in the air and then slowly fall back onto the ground. Because just like the turrets in Iceman stage, you know, a bad jump could mean your death because that fire is instant kill, because like Spike's fire is lethal in 2D video games. This section, if you have Magnet Beam, good. Then you can just skip it and not worry about it at all. If you don't, you can still get through it. That fire doesn't actually do that much damage. This is actually Firestorm in action, by the way. I think it is. Anyway. It looks like fire, like Fireman's Firestorm ability. Anyway. You can still get through it, it doesn't do that much damage. You are going to have to get hit twice though. There's no way you can get through this without not getting without not getting hit, excuse me, unless you have Magnet Beam. So, you know, just figured I might as well show that off. Anyway, moving back on with Fireman's stage. We're actually almost done. There's not much else left. We got these uh, not bullet bills from Bombman's stage and these things that can only be killed by real, wow, bullet bill. Not bullet bill from spawn like 20 times to get to me there. And. Uh, yeah, I try to grind for some health or something here, but I don't get anything. Fun thing about the fire pillars, you can freeze them with the ice beam, which is fun to know for this stage, but it's essential to know for what's coming up next. So, you know. Be sure to know that, or else you won't be able to get past what comes next, which I'm pretending to be all coy about and not tell you, even though I already mentioned Dr. Wiley's name earlier in this video, so whatever. Anyway, let's talk about Fireman. I wouldn't take him on with just Mega Buster. He's, uh, he's pretty tough. He doesn't do as much damage as Electman or Iceman, but he is persistent. Look at him! Oh my god, look at how much he's shooting. Look at how much the Firestorm is shooting at me. Like, oh. There you go. It's a quick battle. Fireman Shuffle. Use the Ice Beam and go in with as full of health as possible because this battle is a war of attrition. You are just going to be firing your Ice Slasher madly at him or if you have your Mega Buster, you're going to be firing your Mega Buster madly at him. He's going to be firing your Firestorm madly at you and either way, the battle will end quickly one way or the other. Just be sure to fire, fire, fire and don't stop firing your weapon, whether it's the Mega Buster or the Ice Slasher. Okay, and with the Firestorm handy, I'm just going to show you all to wrap this up, that Bomb Man is in fact weak to Fireman's Firestorm ability, and that Firestorm actually gives you a temporary little shield when you fire it, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, that's, that's all this is. I think I've covered everything there is to say about the six stages in the original Mega Man. There's the Fire Shield, and there's the Firestorm in action. I think I've covered everything I needed to say. I hope I did. If I missed anything, which I probably did, then, you know, let me know. Um, yeah. Alright. Let's wrap this up. Join me next time, if you like this video, then, you know, join me next time as I go after Dr. Wily and put an end to his reign of terror. See you then.